Hello everybody and welcome to Chrono Plays in the Past. Why in the past? Well, let me take you back to days gone by. Back 19 and a half years to the middle of 1995, when Nintendo, of all companies, released this amazing thing, <coughs> not in the giant box, the giant box is special, called The Virtual Boy. Yes, I got me one of these for Christmas. And I have to say that I am quite impressed with this thing, considering this is 20-year-old technology, which is quite impressive. Now, the case is actually something special. The, this is not how the Virtual Boy was released. This case is actually from Blockbuster. It's the case that Blockbuster put the Virtual Boy in so that people could rent it easily. So they just grab the handle and go with it. And if we take a look inside, we can see something quite interesting, at least in my opinion. We have the Virtual Boy manual that I love that is Velcroed to the back of the case, well, to the top of the case, for easy access and easy storage. As you can see, it's quite damaged. <laughs> but of course, this thing has actually been rented. Not terribly surprising. There are instructions for setting up and using the Virtual Boy, which, in all honesty, I have never read because it's a, not exactly that complicated. So what is the Virtual Boy? Well, the Virtual Boy, yeah, it would be kind of obvious to those who have watched my previous stereoscopic videos like the oculus rift the gear vr the google cardboard that kind of thing and it looks shockingly like those things and that's because it works shockingly like those things it is basically nintendo games in 3d this is as a, as nintendo puts it the 32-bit 3D experience, which doesn't sound like a lot considering that we have 64-bit processors now and our graphics are just absolutely insane. <laughs> but keep in mind, this was made in 1995 and also canceled in 1996. This thing survived a grand spanking total of six months, selling a grand spanking total of 770,000 consoles. That may not sound like a lot, but keep in mind this is past the Nintendo and Super Nintendo, some of the best-selling consoles ever. And of course it's Nintendo, so Nintendo tends to expect a little bit more. You know. So, what do we have? Well, we have what I find an absolutely fascinating little device. I never actually got to play with one of these up until about a couple weeks ago when I got the thing. Thank you, Dad, by the way. He, he found one on eBay for me because he knew I was getting into the stereoscopic stuff. Uh, so, what do we have? Well, basically what you do is you put your head in this thing. You look through these two lenses here, and you see a monochrome red 3D image. Now, that doesn't sound all that impressive. In fact, when I first heard about it, I thought that sounded a little silly. Because I expected something like a backlit LED, you know, like the really old watches, that kind of thing. That's what I expected. Boy, was I wrong! Because inside this thing, there are two little light emitters, and then there's a mirror on each side that moves rapidly. Like, I doubt you can see it. I can barely, barely make it out, but there's a mirror inside of here. And what happens is the mirror moves rapidly back and forth so that the light can paint a picture on your eyes of what you're seeing. Now, if that sounds familiar to anybody, that's because you're experienced with how DLP projectors work. Yes, this thing works on the same principle as the professional grade projectors. Not the cheap LCD projectors you go out and buy at Best Buy because you got a few hundred bucks spare. No, these are the ones that cost a few thousand. 
and this thing has two of them built in. Now, that is why it's monochrome. It is just red and black. They wanted to put full color in here, but the head honchos at Nintendo said, no, that would cost too much. That would quite literally triple the cost because you have one, le one light source, one mirror, one light source, one mirror. Now, to have full color, you would have to have three light sources and three mirrors on each side. Well, that would be a lot to coordinate. That would be a lot to actually cram into this thing. That would probably at least double the weight, considering the circuitry that's actually in this thing is not that complex. Uh, it's quite impressive what this thing can do, honestly. Now, how does this work? Well, what we have, it's really cool. We have stereo audio. There's a speaker here and a speaker here. We also have headphone jacks. We have hard volume control, which to be perfectly honest, I miss in my devices. I miss having a potentiometer in my devices where I can turn it down before I turn the device off. I miss that a lot. No, we have the volume rockers now on our phones. In the center is where the game goes. Little tiny itty bitty cartridge. Now this is Mario Tennis, the game that came with every Virtual Boy. I do not have any other games yet. I haven't had an opportunity to go looking for them yet, but I'm sure I will. Over here we have the extension port, which is used to connect two Virtual Boys together and you can do multiplayer. To be perfectly honest, I don't remember if there are multiplayer Virtual Boy games. I did a lot of research on this, but there's actually a surprising amount of information, so you'll forgive me if I've forgotten some stuff. Uh, the controller goes here, and that's pretty much it. Well, okay, except for the most fascinating thing that I've found. Okay, so you remember on the Oculus Rift, there is an adjuster on each side to adjust the position of the faceplate compared to where the lenses are. It's so that, you know, for people with I guess different shaped heads can change the size. The Gear VR has this nice little vo focus dial, which changes the distance between the lenses and the screen. Well, this does that and something more. This slider here is the focus. So this adjusts the distance between the, the well, mirrors technically, and the lens. But this does something cool, really, really cool. IPD, now let's see if I can remember out the inter-pupil distance. Okay, now I pointed this out, I believe I pointed this out in my Oculus Rift video, where if you need to adjust your position for your eyes to the lens, you could move up and down, but not everybody's eyes are the same distance apart. However, the optics in the Gear VR and the Oculus Rift are very specific. Well, this takes care of it by actually being able to adjust the distance between your eyes, which I just find absolutely fascinating, which I believe is completely unnoticeable. Oh, okay, I see, I see. You can't see it on the camera because, well, the camera is not detailed enough, but the, well, basically the mechanism inside this thing, as I turn this, is separating. They're moving back and forth by about, oh, I'd say quarter of an inch to half an inch. That's a hell of a change. I really am impressed with this thing. Keep in mind, this was made in 1995. And it does something neither the Oculus or the Gear VR do. Or any other stereoscopic device I have seen outside of professional grade microscopes and binoculars. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I am quite amazed with this thing. So how do we turn it on? As you can tell, there's no power button on this thing, like anywhere. 
Well, you turn it on from the very uniquely designed controller. It's got the on button here, on, off, that kind of thing. We have select, start, A, B, and then we have two D-pads. Now, the second D-pad was added because they assumed that if you're working in a 3D environment, you're going to need a second set of controls like that. And if anybody's been paying attention to recent game consoles, they'd realize that those people were absolutely right. Because usually to control in, two, in three dimensions playing a game, you got two thumbsticks to play with. One that controls you know, strafing left and right, going forward, backwards, and then one controls the camera angle, up, down, left, right, that kind of thing. So, yeah, they were absolutely right. So also, on the bottom here, there are also two shoulder buttons that I tend to forget are there because the tennis game doesn't use them. Basically, the tennis game uses this D-pad and the A button, and that's pretty much it. There's start involved, but that's about it. So it doesn't do anything really impressive. Now, I like this. Apparently, the Virtual Boy was designed with portability in mind. This is the battery pack. It runs off of six AA batteries. Now, if anybody remembers, that's what the Game Gear, the Sega portable device, ran off of. It had absolute shit battery life. Honestly, I have no idea what kind of battery life the Virtual Boy has. I've been using it for like two weeks on batteries, and I haven't had a problem yet. But somehow I doubt it has that great a battery life. It's just you can only play Mario Tennis for just so long. Not a bad game. I just can't play it. Um, I got to get used to the controls before I can keep going. Now, everybody I showed this off to was quite impressed with it, especially since it's 20-year-old technology. Now, one thing you might be noticing is that there's no headband to this, okay? So there's no way to strap it to your head and actually use it, which is probably a good thing because this thing is not light. We're talking, ooh, I'd estimate about seven pounds, maybe five pounds, but it's got a, some significant heft to it. Now, it doesn't weigh too terribly much, but imagine you're a kid trying to play this for like half an hour or an hour on end, that would kill your neck. Well, Nintendo's got you covered because of this. What is it? Well, it's a stand for the Virtual Boy. So what you do, you fold out its legs, you sit it down, and you clap, clip the Virtual Boy in on the top. You do that fairly simply. The piece here is mobile. So like you push in this little button here, and this comes out. And then you just slide it into place. And it sits just like that. Now the screw here, the thumb screw here, you loosen and you can tilt up and down the Virtual Boy. So if you're sitting on a desk and you're kind of looking down at the Virtual Boy, you can just tilt your head forward and put your head directly in it. But if your table's a little higher, you just adjust it to be a little bit straighter. And it works surprisingly well. Now, Nintendo did intend on releasing a headset for use while standing, which in my opinion is an idiotic decision for anybody playing with any form of stereoscopics. Don't be standing while you do it. You'll get disoriented and you'll fall over. But they did intend on releasing it. However, the Virtual Boy did not live up to expectations, and they canceled it. So, yeah. So all you had to do was take your controller, which has an oddly familiar connector. Yes, it looks like the Nintendo's connector. It doesn't. It's not exactly like the Nintendo's connector, but it looks like the Nintendo's connector. You plug it in on the bottom here and you're set to go, and that is it. You just turn it on, and it does its thing. Now, you guys probably, you guys, that thing's loud. <laughs> Let's turn this thing down, and I turn it up. Yeah, the joyous audio in this thing. It's, it's absolutely glorious. Let me, let me crank this up for you. 
a little bit. That brings back some memories. <laughs> Uh, yes, not this game specifically, but that quality of audio, that type of music brings back all sorts of fun memories. Uh, memory lane, ain't it fun? But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the entirety of it. I'd love to show it to you, but you cannot see this screen unless your head is actually in the device. And there are emulators up for it, so, like, I could download an emulator and play that, but eh, I don't like how they look. They work on the red-blue thing, like you have to have the red-blue glasses. And, you know what, it just doesn't feel right. You know, it's not the same. But, however, I do want to point out that it, once you're actually using this thing, it has a shockingly good screen. I was quite impressed with this thing when I first looked at it. Um, the resolution looks surprisingly good, even though I think it's, what, 250 or 260 or something like that? Like, really tiny, but it still looks surprisingly good. The contrast is basically infinite. You know how you have on those TVs, like, 20,000 to 1 contrast ratio or 60,000 to 1 or 100,000 or whatever to 1. Well, the contrast ratio in here is basically infinite because the black is literally the absence of light, whereas the red is just the light. Since it's not a backlit LCD screen like the oculus rift or the gear vr the there's there's no over or uh pff, yeah there's no washout of the black there's no backlight to overflow into the screen of course you might be thinking well the gear vr doesn't have that problem because it would be an oled screen well pixels do overlay a little bit the black when it turns on the black is slightly noticeable uh it's significantly better but this is yeah like i said it is what is considered infinite contrast because the black is literally the absence of light and like i said i am quite impressed with this thing it is really amazing it also has some interesting factoids with it. Like I mentioned before, they were planning on making it full color, but it would have cost too much. Which means that 20 years ago, they could have made it full color. Um, as I said, it survived for six months, selling a grand spanking total of 770,000 of the consoles. So it is an impressive collector's item for those who have the entire thing. I can tell you that one is 100% accounted for. Another one, my dad's, is just straight up broken. It doesn't work. Uh, we're going to be taking it apart this weekend once I get the parts for it. Has the special uh, game screws that Nintendo always use, so it's like not user fixable. Eh, yeah, it's not going to stop me any. Now, there's also another thing. As I mentioned, the I don't know how well the battery pack lasts, but that's not really a problem. Since this thing is designed to be sat on a desk and used, it's not really portable. So why not just plug it into the wall? Well, Nintendo has you covered. There is another pack for this that runs off of this giant, giant wall wart, which looks shockingly like the original Nintendo and Super Nintendo wall warts that weigh a bloody ton. And it goes into this pack that just snaps right into the back of the controller. And it just comes apart. And it is a wall wart that came from an original Nintendo. And you just plug it in. Snap into place, and boom, you've got wall power. 
you don't have to stop playing it. Now, that's cool and all, except for the fun fact that a lot of people complained about, you know, headaches and eye strain and that kind of thing when using it. Well, it's what happens when you're staring at a t relatively tiny monochrome screen in 3D. Yeah. <laughs> So there's actually a setting at the very beginning of this, when you first turn it on, you can actually enable an automatic pause system so that every couple of minutes it will pause, allowing you to stop playing the game and rest your eyes, which is actually kind of neat. And also shows that Nintendo was thinking when they built this because that's built into the game that came with the Virtual Boy. So yeah. Now there I think there were 20 or 25 different games that were actually released for this. Some of them were kind of basic like Mario Tennis. Some of them were a little bit more advanced like the not released Star Fox game for it. Yes, that's what you guys get. You didn't buy the console so they never finished making the Star Fox for the Virtual Boy. Ah, c'est la vie, as it were. So, that's what I got for Christmas, and that's a pretty awesome thing. As I said, I was showing it off to a couple of very computer-experienced people, and they were quite, quite impressed with this thing, and they are very excited to take apart the other one later on, just to get a better idea of how it works. Though, we do have a general idea of how it works, though, and we do want to take it apart and try to fix the other one, just for the hell of it. So, I will end this video here before I ramble on any more about this thing that I'm so impressed with that failed so miserably when it was first released. So, I will end it here, and I will say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game, and have fun.